Welcome to our study this uh, afternoon. Uh, I don't know what time you'll be accessing this, but we're glad to have you joining us as we're continuing in our study of the book of Romans. This uh, study has been largely a, uh, a summary. We've been going chapter by chapter, and tonight we are in chapter 15. Now, chapter 15 is uh, a chapter that focuses on really some of the details that Paul is sharing with the church at Rome as he prepares uh, the projected journey to come by and to visit with them. It's uh, some housekeeping things. He talks uh, uh, through a number of different uh, topics, including the offering that he's collecting from the Gentile churches to take it to, church, to the church in Jerusalem that has been suffering through uh, a famine. And uh, so tonight, as we look through this uh, this uh, chapter 15. Uh, time doesn't allow us, as we have not been able to do with any of these, to do verse by verse, but I want to sort of wrap this around um, something that is very distinctive about this particular chapter, and that is the idea of the, the benediction, um, the, the blessing. Uh, it's interesting, whenever we talk about a benediction in our context, in our culture, uh, what do we usually think about? Uh, we think about the thing that comes at the very end. It's, it's the last prayer. It's the last uh, pronouncement at the um, conclusion of a service, which means that what we've done is over and now we're shifting and most of, uh, most of the time we're, we're leaving to go, to go to a different destination. Uh, but really in, the, in Scripture, benediction has a very different uh, sense. Although it can be used that way, a lot of times it does come at the, conclu at the conclusion of a book or the conclusion of uh, a journey. Uh, it also, in most of Paul's letters, will be found uh, at the beginning and at the end and sometimes interspersed throughout. What's interesting about chapter 15 is that Paul actually brings us to three different benedictions, three different blessings. Now the way that you recognize a benediction many times in the Bible is because it has a particular form. Uh, a lot of times it will begin with the word now. Now may the Lord now I pray, now I hope, now we commit. And sometimes it will be uh, concluded with the, the word Amen. So if you look at chapter 15, you'll notice that um, this particular chapter has, as I said, three benedictions. One is found in verse 5, the next one is found in verse 13, and the final one is found at the very end, the very uh, last verse, verse 33. So these are Paul's three benedictions. Listen to these. Verse 5, Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another, according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the first benediction. The second one is in verse 13. Now, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then the last benediction is uh, the most uh, succinct, and this is what it says, verse 33, Now the God of peace be with you all, and then that concludes with, Amen. Amen. You know, when we think about benediction and we think about this idea of blessing others, it's not something that is totally unfamiliar to us here in the Deep South. Um, after living overseas for so many years, uh, it's been interesting to come back and be back in the Southern culture, and uh, you have that ubiquitous phrase, uh, bless your heart. It's just a part of our vocabulary. It's become a part of my vocabulary. We say it so often to so many different kinds of situ in so many different kinds of situations to different people, some family, some distant relations, some just friends. And you know, I was, I was reading in Southern Li Southern Living, which uh, had a short article about the uh, the bless your heart uh, cultural aspect, how we use that. And I thought it was interesting. It talked about the fact that we use it in a in, a, in, in at least four different ways. We use it conspiratorially. Uh, that is to say, a lot of times we'll say it about someone who's not necessarily there to someone that we know is going to share our opinion. Often in a whisper, we'll say something, well, bless his heart or bless her heart. She really doesn't know what's going on. Uh, so it's that kind of a, you know, conspiracy. We are, we're in this together. The second way it's used is 
probably the most common use here in our culture, and that is it's very empathetic, uh, the empathetic bless your heart. It's that version of bless your heart that's kind, courteous, uh, deployed as a, as a way of, of, of sharing empathy or concern. It's something that we, we say, well, bless, bless your heart. I know this is a difficult time for you. And we, we all receive that as uh, really an olive branch, a pat on the back, uh, a sign of someone's understanding what we're going through. The third thing that the article talked about was what they called the sassy or the sarcastic bless your heart. And of course, we've all heard this too. Uh, someone will say uh, of, of someone else. Now, they may say it when they're not there. Uh, if they know them really well, they may say it just as a way of poking at someone. You know, well, bless her heart, she, she must not have a mirror in her home. You know, or bless his heart, he, he may not really understand what everybody else is saying about him. So it's, it can be very sarcastic, it can be very uh, uh, sassy. And then, of course, there's the bless your heart, uh, which is the I don't really know what else to say. Uh, that's if somebody shares something with you about someone and you really don't have a comment, you really don't have an opinion, and uh, they'll look at you and you just say, well, bless her heart, bless her heart. That's a way of getting out of the, the conversation. But now, when we are coming to Scripture, uh, it's, it's very, very different uh, when we're talking about the blessing of God. I thought it was interesting that one of the first verses that we learned in Arabic was um, a very, very... Uh, simple verse. It comes from Jeremiah 19.25 and the verse says um, this. It said, Blessed be my people Egypt. Of course, we were in Egypt at the time and so when we were learning uh, Arabic, they said this is a great verse to memorize, not only because it talks about Egypt, but guess what? You already know it pretty much because uh, the word for blessed was the, actually the name of the president of the country at that time. His name was Mubarak. And so they said, you already know blessed. And they said, and you already know the word Egypt. And so the only thing you have to say, learn is my people, which is the word Shabi. So you guys can learn this too. You just say the name of the president, the name of the country, and the word Shabi. So Mubarak Shabi Masr. Masr is the name of the country. Mubarak Shabi Masr. Blessed be my people, Egypt. You know, so a lot of times, you know, blessings. I remember learning that and thinking, well, that was easy. That was easy. And you see, a lot of times it really is easy to say a blessing. We do it almost without thinking, especially when we're saying, well, bless, bless his heart, bless her heart, bless your heart. But when you really think about it, it is a very, very powerful biblical way of speaking the Word of God into somebody's heart in a way that they can receive it. I think that's why Paul here in chapter 15, three different times, comes back to this blessing. Now be the God of peace. Now um, may God be with you. He comes back to this blessing to, uh, to his hearers. So, you know, today we're going to talk about blessing in this chapter. And uh, we're going to look at three different questions. Uh, we're going to look at in this, uh, in this chapter um, the ideas of uh, three, three things that Paul is teaching us. One is that God blesses based upon his character. God blesses us, His people, based upon who He is. The second thing is that God blesses in accordance with our need. In other words, God's blessings match up perfectly to what we need at that point in our lives, at the, at the, at the point of the greatest need for what we're going through, what we're experiencing. God is going to meet us there. The third thing is, is that God primarily blesses us through His presence with us. Sometimes we tend to think about blessings as material things. But really, we'll, we'll come to see that God's greatest blessing to us is that He mediates His presence, uh, His presence to us. Now, there are a lot of um, blessings that we're familiar with in the Bible. Um, here are some of the ones that we hear most, uh, most often. Jude, uh, verses 24 and 25, Now unto him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of His glory with great joy. To the only God and our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. And now, that, that is one of the most popular blessings that we hear, I think, spoken in a service of coming out of the, the New Testament book of, of Jude. Hebrews also has one that 
You've probably heard this one. Um, now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with every good thing that you may do His will, working in us that which is pleasing in His sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. There's a couple of others that, uh, that come out of the New Testament that are very familiar. I know one of my family's favorite, Ephesians 2, 20 and 21, uh, says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we would ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be glory in the church and, th- and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Uh, amen. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you may have recently heard, if you listen to Christian radio stations, uh, are on the internet uh, a lot, especially during this time of, uh, of the pandemic. A lot of the churches that haven't been able to meet have been sharing a song uh, called uh, The Blessing. And this song is based actually on uh, Numbers 6, 22 through 26, which in part says this, The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. And you heard that one before? I mean, that is the probably the most well-known blessing that comes from the Old Testament, from the book of, of Numbers. We hear it in so many any situations. And of course now, it is that very popular song that if you haven't heard, it's called The Blessing. I would encourage you to go out and, and listen to that. But it brings us to that question before we get into our our points. What does it mean uh, to bless? You know, if you go all the way back to Genesis, uh, where we have God uh, creating the world and blessing that which He's created, it's interesting to note that the idea of blessing, which, by the way, is that word uh, "badaka," which we get the word "mubarak." Remember, I talked about the verse that we learned in Arabic: "Mubarak shabi masr." Mubarak, "badaka" means blessing. It's, it's interesting to note that in Genesis. Uh, in, the, in the Old Testament, one-sixth of the references uh, to the word blessed, where the word blessed is used, uh, comes from Genesis alone. I mean, Genesis is a book that is full, uh, not just of curses. Of course, the, the curses are there the, when Adam and Eve um, uh, sinned in, in the fall in the garden and the ground was cursed. The curses are there. But the interesting thing is, is that there is a tremendous uh, emphasis upon blessing there in the book of, of, um, of Genesis. Now, what you find in Genesis is God bless, blesses His creation. Is that There's two senses of, of blessing. There's a general blessing that is bestowed upon all creation. Uh, God blessed the birds of the air. God blessed the, the beasts of the field. God blessed the, the Sabbath day as a day of, of rest. And those are, are, are blessings that are to be fruitful, to multiply. And of course, we see that all around us in, in nature and in creation. But there's a very specific sense of blessing when God created uh, Adam and Eve, the blessing upon uh, His people. Now, by the time in Genesis we reach the generations of Abraham, what we find is, although most of the instances of blessing occur in Genesis, it has been very scarce up to that point in the book. That is to say, all the way through Noah, from the fall through Noah, uh, the word bless is only used three, uh, three different times. Once in the creation of man, which we've already talked about, and then uh, blessing Noah and his sons after they came uh, off of the ark. Meanwhile, the curse has been very plentiful, uh, and it seems to be posed to overwhelm the blessing uh, in life. Then God, in one particular verse, begins this pattern of blessing that is very particular, that is very pointed. God speaks to Abraham five times in just two verses, and this is what he says. This is probably the most blessed verse, blessed verse in the Bible. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth will be Yeah, you guessed it. They will be blessed. And so there's a particular kind of blessing that God brings to His people, different from the general blessing. Uh, Matt uh, Champlin uh, said it this way, and I think it really bears uh, our our listening to uh, this evening. He says this, 
Blessing is the bestowing of a privilege, of a right, of a responsibility, or favor upon some portion of creation by God, um, or perhaps by the one that he has blessed. In the case of Aaron, this is the blessing that Aaron pronounced on the people. In relation to humanity, to be blessed, says Matt, is to be one of God's own people, okay, and with all the benefits that it brings. In other words, the blessing of God is His relational presence in our life. Now, as if to underscore this, as you go through Genesis, immediately following this blessing, or immediately preceding this blessing, uh, in the fall, we have the story of, of Cain. And as Cain uh, is, is alienated because of his, his uh, murderous act, Cain comes to God and he says this. He says um, that, that the, the, the curse is so much, it is too much to be born. And, the, and, and what it means, he says, is he says, from your face I will be hidden. In other words, the curse of God in his life alienates him from God's presence. Whereas the divine blessing is that I will be with you. Now, we have three blessings that we're going to look at today. Uh, but we're going to look at them under this rubric of those three points. The blessing is based on God's character in accordance with our need and through His presence mediated to us. So let's take a look at those uh, very quickly this evening as we move through uh, this chapter. We'll be pausing from time to time to read different passages. Uh, first, God blesses based upon His character. You know, Jeremiah uh, 32, 41-42 says this, Yes, I will rejoice in doing them good. It uses a word that actually in one translation is translated blessing. Yes, I will rejoice in blessing them, and I will faithfully plant them in this land. What Jeremiah is telling us is that, that God delights, God rejoices in being able to bless us, to show His favor to us. You see, the blessings that God gives us are based upon who God is is. Uh, you notice in these blessings that we read just a moment ago, in each case, uh, Paul identifies God in a different way. Verse 5, Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded. May the God of patience and comfort. In verse 13, Now may the God of hope fill you with all hope. And in the last verse, he says to him, um, Now the God of peace be with you all. You see, in each case, God is identified in a particular way because the blessings that God gives, that God gives to us, are based upon His character. You see, there's a general principle in the in the Bible that uh, because of, because of who God is, that is true in all of our lives, and that is this: you cannot give uh, what you do not have. You cannot. You cannot transmit to someone something that you yourself have never experienced. And of course, when it comes to the Lord blessing us, God is basically giving to us all that He is, that He is a God of patience and a God of comfort, that He is a God of hope, that He is a God of peace. And because God's character is such, then God is able to give to us what God Himself is so that we are... In a sense, we are, we are mirroring God to those who are around us. I thought it was interesting when my son uh, went to seminary up at Southeastern. For those years, he, uh, he joined a church that um, was um, one, of, one of the churches that um, it's very different from uh, here at First Baptist Church of Birmingham. It's a very, it was a very young church. Um, I mean, when I say young, Everybody was young in that church. Susan and I attended there, and there was a great gap between us and anybody else in terms of, of age. It was very contemporary. But the interesting thing to me was the name of the church was Imago Dei, which literally means the image of God. And so they would have T-shirts that they would wear around. They would say Imago Dei. And, and you know, I thought, well, in one sense, that's rather pretentious, but on the other hand, this is really what God has called us to be in this world, that we are ambassadors for Christ, we are the ones who represent the King, that we, in having received from God what who God is, uh, God's peace, God's hope, God's joy, that we, we give that same thing to others in, in blessing others. Like Abraham, we have been blessed so that we can be a blessing. So God blesses based upon his character, who 
He is. And in turn, if we really do want to bless those around us, then we have to be very careful that our character reflects the character of God. So our blessings really do originate in what God has done in our life and what God is doing through us. Now the second thing that God tells us here, that Paul tells us here, is that God blesses in accordance with our need. That is to say, God looks at what's going on in our lives and God specifically in every one of these blessings pinpoints a need that is taking place in Paul's life or in the lives of those who are in the church in Rome. The blessings are specific. You know, so often when we say to someone, well, will the Lord bless you or just bless your heart, uh, we're not very specific about that. Uh, you know, the biblical blessing is always something that is, is quite specific. It, it pinpoints a need that someone, uh, someone is experiencing in their, in their lives. And so, you know, look at, look at what it says in uh, verse 13. Now, now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, one of the reasons that we are blessed is basically that we can build one another up in the image of Jesus Christ. You know, this, this blessing that we see here in verse 13, and the one that we see in verse 5, May the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded towards one another, according to Christ Jesus, that with one mind and one mouth you might glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you read those verses that come before and after, what you find is that Paul is encouraging them to do several things. He's encouraging them in verse 1 to bear with one another, to bear with the scruples of the weak. You remember last week we were talking about those who had difficulty with uh, some days being special days as uh, opposed to uh, every day being the same. People who had difficulties with eating meat that may have been sacrificed to, to idols. And so Paul, coming to this next chapter, begins by saying, we who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak. So in building one another up, we need to be aware of those who are around us. The second thing he says is that we need to put others first. Listen to what he says in verse 2. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. You see, the reason that we have been put here is to minister to our neighbor. You know, Jesus is a great parable about the Good Samaritan was in response to, well, who is my neighbor? And Jesus wants us to realize from that parable and from many passages, including this one, that our neighbor are those who are around us who are in need. So those who are weak, those who are struggling, that we are to seek the good of those who are our, our neighbor. And that we are to build each other up by receiving each other. If you look at this in verse 7, he says, Therefore receive one another just as Christ also uh, received us. In other words, there's to be absolutely no difference between that grace that we have received through Jesus Christ and what we extend to those who are around us. And as always, Jesus Christ is our model, uh, both of, in all three of these, in, in, in bearing with one another, in putting other people first, and in receiving one another. Jesus Christ is pointed to here by Paul uh, as he says to them, For even Christ did not please himself. For it is written, the reproaches of those who reproach you fell on me. And here in verse 7, just as Christ received us to the glory of God. And so Jesus Christ is our model of how we are to build one another up. And he said that the, the goal of that, and it's here in this, in this blessing, in this beatitude, is that uh, with one mind and one mouth we glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is to say that, they, that, that, that the people around us, would see by the way that we treat one another that we serve a loving and a caring and a sacrificial God who gave himself for us. You know, Paul said, and he's very specific about this in verse 9, he said that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. Uh, as it is written, for this reason I will confess to you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again he says, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. You see, Paul's whole concern is that the Gentiles would be brought into the family of God. And this happens through the way in which we as brothers and sisters bless one another. That we do that for edification. That we bear with one another. That we put each other first. That we receive one another just as Christ has uh, received us. So, one of the things, too, that we realize, we recognize in this, 
is that all of us, as we said last week, are sometimes strong and sometimes weak. All of us, in other words, uh, have, have great needs. And Paul was not at all reticent about mentioning the needs that he had. You see, I can only bless you, uh, you can only bless me, as we are aware of what God is doing in our lives and where our needs uh, exist. If I don't know what's going on in your life, if, if I'm not transparent with you and you're not with me, then how do we know how to bless each other? How do we know how to pray for each other? How do we know to pronounce what word to pronounce, what scripture to bring to bear on each other's uh, life? Paul had his own needs. And so often, uh, you know, our needs are specified through prayer. Uh, we pray for one another. Uh, you know, Paul in, uh, in this passage at the very end talks about uh, his needs in prayer. And it's very interesting that, that Paul would use such strong language, both about his need and about the challenge. Listen to what he says in verse 30. Now I beg you, brethren. He says, I implore you. He says, I'm, I'm really pleading with you that, that through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit that you strive together with me in prayer. In other words, Paul didn't just say, hey, would you guys pray for me? Paul said, I'm begging you. I implore you. I need you to pray for me. And that I want you to pray, not just offer up a prayer, but to strive with me, to fight with me, to, to really labor with me in prayer. And then he gives them four different needs that were things that were a part of his, his struggle. Now, Paul had struggled, like all of us. But listen to the things that Paul asked them to pray for. You find in verse 31, um, these are the prayer requests, for 31 and 32, and this is what he says, that I may be delivered from those in Judea who do not believe. In other words, those who are the enemy of the gospel. Uh, he's talking about those who are in opposition to the gospel. He says, I need to be delivered from the enemies of the gospel. But listen to what he says next. And that my service from Jeru for Jerusalem may be acceptable uh, to the saints. In other words, Paul said, I, I need not only to be delivered from, protected from the enemies, I need to find favor uh, with God's people. Paul was taking this offering that had been collected for the church in Jerusalem, which was suffering. But the offering came from Gentiles. And Paul was trying to unite both the Gentile church and the, and the Jewish believers uh, in Christ together into one body. And Paul said, I, I need favor uh, from those who are my fellow believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, so often our prayer is, Lord, protect me from those who are out. From, uh, on the outside, but also, Father, give me favor from those who are within, inside the, the body of Christ. And then he said, that I may come to you with joy. Uh, you know, there needs to be also that prayer in Paul's life. He said, this is a need of mine, that is to have joy in the journey. That what I do, I don't do out of obligation. That what I do, I don't do out of a, just an overwhelming sense of responsibility, though it is there. But Lord, that it would be done with a sense of joy that I have been privileged. I'm being, being allowed to be a part of this great ministry. And then finally, he says, and that I may be refreshed together with you. That is to say, a prayer that all of us would pray, and maybe perhaps <laughs> at this time more than any other, that we just need a refreshing from the Lord, that God would, would come into our lives and speak to us in a very specific way to refresh our, to refresh our spirits. So God blesses in accordance with our needs, but we have to be very transparent with one another, honest with one, another, with one another, to share what our needs are so that we can pray for each other and so that we can speak a blessing into each other's life. And then finally, uh, and probably in, for our uh, study today, one of the most important uh, points that Paul brings to us through Romans 15 is that God blesses uh, through His presence both with us and within us. Um, you know, listen to what, uh, what Paul says, this last benediction. He says, Now the God of peace be with you all. It's interesting, isn't it? Um, Paul has talked about the things that God would grant us, uh, that first benediction. The second benediction, he talks about that now that the God uh, would, would, would fill us, but on this last benediction, it's very simple. He says, I'm praying that God would just be with you. That God's presence 
And of course, how God's presence is with us is almost always in Scripture mediated through His Holy Spirit. And He talks about the Holy Spirit coming into our life and the Holy Spirit uh, giving, sanctifying us, the Holy Spirit giving us His power so that we can serve. So we're empowered by the Spirit, verse 19 says. We are, we are sanctified by the Spirit. We are, we, are set aside, we are set aside. But it is God's presence in our life, God walking alongside of us, that enables us to both receive moment by moment that blessing, uh, the God of peace uh, in our lives that we in turn then can share with others uh, around us. Uh, I come back again uh, to this uh, quote from Matt uh, uh, Champlin. He says this, you remember, in relation to humanity, to be blessed is to be one of God's own people. To be blessed is to be one of God's own people with all the benefits that it brings. In other words, the blessing of God is the relational presence in one's life. God is in our life. Let me tell you something I thought was really kind of neat that happened with Susan and I early on. um, Well, I say early on. I guess we've been married 25 years at this point, not so early on. We took a trip to Europe, one we had planned for a long time. And uh, Susan's very much a detail person. She was working through all the details. We were visiting um, in England and all the way through down through Italy and back up France and ended up in Paris. We're in Belgium. And in each place we were trying to see all of these landmarks, you know, all these museums, all of these castles, all of these places. And, you know, <clears throat> I remember at one point Susan looked at me and she had expressed some concern about you know, were we going to have time to see this? We're going to have time to do this. And I want you to know, <clears throat> I got a lot of points for this, but it really was f- from the heart. Susan looked at me and she said, what do you think? And I just looked at her and I said, Susan, you're my main attraction. As long as I'm here with you, I'm fine. You know, that's really what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. It means to say to the Lord, all the things you give, all the things you do for us, those are great. It's a part of being a part of your family. But the greatest blessing is to have the Lord in our life, that He is our main love, our only love. He is the one who is our main attraction. I pray that that's your experience. Now, I would encourage you to go back through, find those blessings in there and read them. Think about them in relationship to your life and what God has done. And think about how you can speak a word of blessing into the, into the lives of those around you. And again, I would just say, in order for us to do that, we really do have to be very transparent with one another so that we know how to pray and we know how to pronounce a blessing. Let me pray with you right now. Father, I do ask that we would come, Lord, more and more to know each other as we are known. And that, Father, in doing so, we would be able to be a channel of blessing to all of those who are around us. We thank you, Father, for the blessing, which is to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and to walk with you day by day. Lord, help us to share that blessing with all of those around us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.